In this video, we are analyzing Simon Armitage's poem, Mother Any Distance, which some of you may be studying for your GCFC Love and Relationships Poetry Cluster. But in any case, it's a great poem to read and analyze. So I'll start by briefly summarizing the poem, after which I'll dive straight into the analysis and cover techniques like imagery and symbolism, followed by a discussion on the form, including rhyme, rhythm, and meter. There's lots of awesome content in this video you don't want to miss out, so make sure that you watch till the very end. And as always, please do give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel for more useful English lit and poetry resources down the line. This will really help me carry on making great content for you all, and I'd massively appreciate it. starts with the speaker directly addressing his mother and we soon find out that she is helping her child who is now a grown-up prepare for moving into a new house. The implication is that the speaker is leaving the nest and both mother and son see this as a watershed event in their lives and their relationship. By the way, the speaker's gender isn't really alluded to anywhere in the poem so I'm just assuming that it's a he based on the poet's own gender. While the parent-child theme lends itself easily to sentimentality, the speaker's tone isn't actually very emotional, but there's definitely a sense of pent-up wistfulness and longing that bubbles beneath the surface, which we'll go on to explore in our analysis right now. First, notice that there are several dominant groups of imagery in this poem, and together they establish its central themes. Stanza 1 enumerates various references to domestic partitions, such as windows, pelmets, doors, walls, floors, etc. And these, as you notice, are all dividers within a home, whether vertical or lateral. Now, this is apt because the notion of partitioning is reflective of what's happening between mother and son upon him moving out of the family home, i.e. they will soon be partitioned and separated each occupying a different space and household. Later, in stances two and three, the image of the house takes on a more concrete form, with references to the empty bedrooms, the ladder to the loft, and two floors below. So we see the son's new home gradually taking shape, but the overall impression is still one of barrenness. The next important imagery relates to the third word in the poem, distance. All three stanzas contain diction about length, from any distance greater than a single span and words like measure and acres in stanza one, then stanza two beginning with you at the zero end, which refers to the starting point of the measuring tape, recording length, reporting meters, centimeters back to base, the line still feeding out on reeling years between us, and finally, the reference to his mother's fingertips still pinch the last one hundredth of an inch in the final stanza. On the most basic level, this recurring motif of length suggests the growing physical distance between mother and son now that he's about to move out. But note that all such references to distance are given in the context of collaboration between mother and the son. It's a distance then that is linked up by the spool of tape which symbolizes that while the bond between a mother and her child is ever present, their proximity will vary inevitably throughout the course of their lives, closer when the son was young and dependent, but wider as the son becomes an independent adult. This idea of a mother and child link is also reinforced by the image and symbol of the kite in line eight, which is part of the third dominant group of imagery in this poem, that of flight. There's a possible parallel between the kite line and the umbilical cord, and the way Armitage breaks up line eight with the zezura between anchor, kite, reminds us of this cutting of the cord between mother and infant, but also symbolizes the separation of mother, who is the anchor and the base, and so that supports, and son, who is the kite about to fly away, at this cusp between dependency and independence, which is what is exactly portrayed at this moment in the poem. But there's also a certain level of anxiety that the speaker feels about flying off. For example, he spacewalks and climbs the ladder to the loft, and at the end, he reaches towards a hatch that opens on an endless sky to fall or fly. 
References to spacewalking and a hatch, which is a door in a spacecraft, could imply that the sun is about to venture into a whole new universe, both in terms of owning a new home and entering into the world of adulthood. The word prairies in the prairies of the floors in line four similarly speaks to this concept of a vast new world of unknowns. So this sense of anxiety reaches its peak with the final phrase in the poem, to fall or fly, because it contains an implied allusion to the myth of Icarus, who, against his father Daedalus's warning, flies too high near the sun, which results in the melting of his wax wings and him falling to the, his death in the sea. So the underlying idea is that the speaker is aware of this delicate tension between seeking independent freedom and holding on to parental support, because not doing the latter may lead to catastrophe. Now let's move on to analysing the metre and rhyme in this poem which Armitage uses to reinforce the strength of the mother and son's relationship, despite their imminent separation. It probably doesn't take much to notice that there's lots of rhyme throughout the poem, but even with quite a bit of end rhymes, what's interesting is that there is also internal and slant rhymes couched within the many lines. notice from the slide just now that there's a lot of rhymes. Why? Well, perhaps it's to create the sort of echo one would hear in a big empty house. Equally, the sonic harmony sets up the impression that mother and son are in sync. This is carried through with the rhymes tape bass, recording reporting, stairs years, and feeding unreeling in the description of the measurement of the house. But what also highlights the cooperative nature between the speaker and his mother is the unique meter in line five, which features an eclectic but dance-like combination of the dactylic rhythm, you at the, me with the, the cretic, zero end, spool of tape, and the ampibrac, recording. The rhythmic musicality of the you at the and me with the phrase makes it seem like the measuring of the room is their own type of dance, a coded dance that only the mother and her son can understand. But the push and pull tension created through the dynamic mix of stresses and unstresses also brings to mind the tension between the sons leaving and staying in the family home. The following line, line six, then refers to a regular trochaic rhythm, but the haphazard placement of commas somewhat undercuts any sense of regularity. But note that the trochaic rhythm that spans the first half of stanza two changes back to an iambic pattern with the turn into line nine. And this shift from a stress-let line to the unstress-let line is perhaps appropriate because the speaker is here moving from portraying a collaborative dance to a quieter, solitary action that of him space walking alone through the empty bedrooms. Only line 11 has to give, which is also the shortest line in the poem, briefly changes back to trochaic, which emphasizes the emotional intensity the speaker feels at this breaking point, as he realizes that despite both sides' unwillingness to let go of their tape, they must do so. It's also possible to see this docked line as a syntactical mirroring of the breaking off that's mentioned in the phrase breaking point, and of course, the breaking up of mother and son as well. So to end our analysis, it's worth noting that the emotions in this poem are rather ambivalent. It's a mix of longing, anxiety, but of course, love. There's a clear sense that mother and son are deeply attached at a fundamental level. But of course, they are mature enough people to recognize that the truest form of love is often to let go, despite the mutual reluctance to do so. Yet Armitage's suggestion is that the mother-child bond is not ever defined by physical proximity, but rather by an ineradicable emotional attachment which lies at the heart of any parent-child relationship. And that's all guys. I hope this was helpful and that you enjoyed my analysis. Please give this video a thumbs up and make sure that you subscribe to my channel for more useful English lit video content down the line. I'd love it if you can comment with your thoughts on either this poem or just any other text that you're studying. And I will also be posting the link to my blog post on Simon Armitage's poem and also Caroline Duffy's poem, Before You Were Mine, which I also have a video on in the description box. So make sure that you check those links out and happy studying as always. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye!